Hello, my name is Kyle King and I'm one of the developers of NetGruck, a network resource visualization tool being developed at the University of Maryland. Today I will demonstrate the basic features of NetGruck and how it can be used to analyze network resource usage. To begin, we simply load network traffic into NetGruck. NetGruck can load network traffic from NetGruck save files, PCAP formatted network captures, or directly from a network interface in real time. I will connect to my wireless network interface. The NetGrok user interface has three tabs corresponding to three different views of network traffic. The graph view, the tree map view, and the edge table. The edge table can be used to view the underlying data being visualized by NetGrok at any given time. The graph view represents network hosts as nodes in a graph and connections as edges between them. Connections can be seen by mousing over a host. Hosts inside the center ring are local hosts, and hosts outside the ring are foreign. Foreign hosts are laid out using a hashing algorithm, so they will appear in the same location in every NetGrok installation. A host size is proportional to the number of connections the host makes, also known as its degree. Hosts are colored by their bandwidth usage. Red hosts consume a large amount of bandwidth, while green hosts consume very little. Hosts that send no traffic are called zero-byte hosts. Zero-byte hosts are depicted as white nodes with dashed borders. Double-clicking on an item in the graph will zoom in on that item. Double-clicking again will zoom back out. You can also zoom by using a scroll wheel and pan by dragging the canvas. For this demonstration, I've defined two groups, a google.com group that contains hosts in the google.com domain and a wireless group that contains hosts in my local wireless network. Here I've zoomed in on the Google group. Group definitions can be added to NetGrok by editing the groups.ini file in the installation directory. We can explore the Google group by mousing over the nodes within it. Right-clicking on an item gives us a number of options such as performing a DNS lookup. The tree map view displays hosts as rectangles within a hierarchy of network groups. Thick borders in the tree map separate network groups, while thin borders separate hosts within each group. The tree map view is useful for viewing large network captures since it can display more hosts and connections without occlusion than the network view. Hosts are colored by their bandwidth usage. Red hosts consume a large amount of bandwidth, while yellow hosts consume very little. A host size is proportional to the number of connections it makes. A host connections can be viewed by mousing over it. Hosts with connections to the selected host remain colored, while those without are grayed out. I will demonstrate how NetGrok can be used to analyze network resource patterns in a large data set using searching and filtering. We will analyze a network capture of wireless users at the 2006 OSDI conference. This data is available from the Crawdad website. The tree map view quickly shows the top bandwidth consuming hosts here, here, and here. Note that this host sends a large amount of information to only one other host. The largest rectangles, here, correspond to hosts that make the most connections. Hovering over these hosts, we see the connections they make without any occlusion. The Details on Demand pane on the right gives further information about these hosts, such as the number of incoming and outgoing connections. The search box can be used to find hosts matching a given IP and subnet mask. For example, we can search for IPs that start with 192 using an 8-bit mask. The bandwidth and degree sliders can be used to find hosts matching a range of bandwidth or degree.
The histogram at the bottom of the screen shows a line chart of the number of connections made over time. The slider below it can be used to inspect the connections made in a specific time. Filtering by degree shows a large number of zero-byte hosts in the data. Zero-byte hosts are hosts to which communication is sent, but no response is received. Typically, this is the result of a ping sweep, in which a user tries to find other hosts on the network by attempting to communicate with a range of IPs. Let's try to find the user performing the suspected ping sweep. First, we find times at which zero-byte hosts appear using the time slider. Here we see a large number of connections made to zero-byte hosts in a small period of time. If we show edges for a few zero-byte hosts and relax the degree filter, we can trace the edges to find the user performing the ping sweep. And there he is.